Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about IPv6 global unicast addresses. The different types of addresses that we've got in IPv6 are global unicast, unique local, and link local. We'll cover unique local and link local in a later lecture in this section. This lecture, we're going to focus on global unicast. So global unicast addresses are similar to IPv4 public addresses, meaning not private addresses. It is an IPv4 public address that's publicly reachable that was assigned by the internet authorities. So global unicast addresses in IPv6 are equivalent to that. They're assigned to an individual host and have global reachability everywhere on the internet unless blocked by security policy like on a firewall. And they're assigned from the range 2000 double colon slash three. The internet authorities assign blocks from that overall 2000 double colon slash three range to different organizations that need to communicate on the internet. And a, a common assignment for a company is a slash 48 block. For example, 2001 colon 10 colon 10 double colon slash 48. So the example is a company has applied through a service provider for a block of IP addresses and they were given that. So normally it will be a slash 48, but a smaller or a larger size block can be assigned depending on the size of the company. So a larger company can get more addresses. A smaller company will get less addresses. And if you're using IPv6 at home, just yourself individually, you'll be given a slash 64, which will be assigned by DHCP typically. The reason that an individual would be assigned a slash 64 is that the IPv6 standards state that addresses assigned to individual hosts should use a slash 64 mask. So that doesn't just apply to you at home every organization everywhere as well, even when they're using a large block of addresses for their individual hosts, every individual host should use a slash 64. It's not like in IPv4 where we can be using a slash 24 or a slash 16 or a slash 30 on point to point links, for example, everywhere we're expected to use a slash 64. Now, the IPv6 address is 128 bits long, so a slash 64 splits it in half. Half of the address is going to be the network portion, and the other half is the host portion. And if a company is assigned a slash 48 address by the internet authorities, which is common, and uses slash 64 host addresses, which is what they're supposed to do, that leaves 16 bits that the company can use to assign to its internal subnets, to its different links. For example, if the company was assigned 2001 colon 10 colon 10 double colon slash 48 by the internet authorities, then that leaves subnets 2001 10 10 0 slash 64 to 2001 10 10 F F F F slash 64 to be available to be assigned to its internal network segments. So they've got 16 bits that they can play with for dividing up the largest, the larger slash 48 block into smaller subnets. 16 bits means 65,534 possible subnets. So that should be plenty for most situations. That also leaves us 64 bits left over for the host address. And you can see the number on this slide here. It's a huge amount of hosts that you could have in the one subnet. You're never going to get up to anywhere near that kind of number. And if you look at the last bullet point in the slide here, you can see a common way that the IPv6 address is going to be divided up, that the first three hextets are the overall slash 48 block that was assigned to the company. 
the next, the fourth hex step is going to be divided up into different subnets. And the last four hex tets are what is assigned to the individual host. So we've got an example here where a company has been assigned the slash 48 block 2001 colon db8 colon zero. So that fourth hex tet is what we're going to use for each of their different subnets. And you can see the example here on the link between R1 and R2, that is subnet 2001, db8, 0, 1. The link between R2 and R3 is 2001, db8, 0, 2. If you look below R1 on its fast 2 slash 0 interface, that's 2001, db8, 0, 0. And on the link going down from R3 on its fast 2 slash 0 interface, that's 2001, db8, 0, 3. So you can see that here for this organization, all of their IPv6 addresses everywhere begin with 2001, db8, 0. That was the slash 48 block that they were assigned. The next hex tet, well, the first subnet is zero, the next subnet is one, the next one is two, and so on and so on. They're still going to make sure that when they allocate those subnets, that they do it in contiguous blocks because that's going to help with the summarization that they're going to configure on their routers. Okay. Next thing is we're going to have to configure IP addresses on the hosts as well. So on that link between R1 and R2, on the R1 side, on its fast 0 slash 0 interface, we give it IP address 2001 db8 0 1, which is the subnet, and then the host address 0 0 0 1. On the link between R2 and R3, on the R3 side, on its fast 1 slash 0 interface, we've given it IP address 2001, db8, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 1. So you can see how the IPv6 address works here. We're also going to take that on a stage as well because we're going to do the address shortening. So we're going to remove that contiguous blocks of zeros. So again, that same interface on R1, the fast 0 slash 0 interface, it gets IP address 2001 db8 0 1 double colon 1 slash 64. That's just another way of writing the address that you saw earlier, where we've stripped out those contiguous blocks of zeros, and we just write it as a double colon 1 at the end. So that was the address on R1. The address on R3 on its fast 1 slash 0 interface is 2001 db8 0 2 for the subnet double colon 1. If you have a look on the other side of that link on R2, on R2's fast 1 slash 0 interface, it would get IP address 2001 colon db8 colon 0 colon 2 because it's on the same subnet and then double colon two. So the host portion of the address is different. And now we're gonna have connectivity between all of our different hosts that you see in the diagram there. Now, using a slash 64 for all network subnets, including point-to-point -point links and loopback addresses can seem wasteful. In IPv4, you don't do that. Definitely if you were using actual public IP addresses. In IPv4, it's pretty standard that we use a slash 30 for point-to-point -point links because that gives us an address on one side and an address on the other side. For loopback addresses, it's standard that we use a slash 32. But in IPv6, you don't do that. You always use slash 64s everywhere. Old school engineers can have a bit of a problem with this because we've had it drummed into us for years that we don't waste addresses. But for IPv6, the official line from the authority is, is that there's that many addresses, but it doesn't matter if you, if you waste huge chunks of them. So it's recommended use slash 64s everywhere. That simplifies the overall addressing plan and it also enables the use of EUI 64 addresses that you're going to learn about later in this section. 
So how do we actually configure it? First thing that we need to do is to enable IPv6 routing with the IPv6 unicast routing command. But actually, it's probably about time to wrap up this lecture. So let's do the configuration in the next lecture where I'll also show you how to do it in the lab. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.